How's it going, folks? I've seen a lot of these out and about today. Ah, fun times. Anyway, I thought I'd talk about this book some more. And I'm using the New Jerusalem because of this chapter of uh, my little talk on homophobia. Where it started and how it doesn't apply anymore. <laughs> unless you, unless there's gay couples out there that are also pagans and they're, you know, doing ritual stuff. Otherwise, someone's personal lifestyle has nothing to do with what the authors had a problem with. They had a problem with fertility cults. Oh, by the way, this is royalty-free music. So, that's my whole point, anyway. It's, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter to the Westboro Baptists, you know. But, I mean, they're fixated on what these people do in the privacy of their own uh, residence, or whatever. Uh, and this book is concerned with someone's worshipping a different god in a different way. And all that stuff seems kind of fun, so let's put a guilt trip so people don't do that. Anyway, let's see. Uh, read a little Bible here. Yes, there were male and female sacred ceremonial prostitutes. You know, like in, um, in this little tale, where Enkidu was uh, corrupted out of his natural state, where he could talk to the animals and all that, and he became a man, got his back shaved, and all because of a, a temple prostitute, a ceremonial prostitute. Depends on which version you read. I have another one around here somewhere. I'm just going to show you. Oh well. There it is. This is a real old book. <laughs> My first introduction to the uh, Canaanite and uh, Sumerian and all that. <sighs> Bible! That's what I'm going to read. Alright. I shall not punish your daughters for playing the whore nor your daughters-in-law for committing adultery, when the men themselves are wandering off with whores and offering sacrifices with sacred prostitutes. And that's Hosea 4.14, according to this wonderful translation. That's why I'm using this one. All right. Uh... Deuteronomy 23.18 There must be no sacred prostitutes among the women of Israel and no sacred prostitutes among the men of Israel. Yeah, ceremonial prostitutes were... Uh, oops. Hang on. I'm looking at my notes up here. They were pretty common back in the day, you know? Uh... Ubiquitous. And, uh, oh, this sacred uh, vocation was not gender specific. There were professional sperm spillers to suit the taste of every male worshiper in the community. The point of this was to symbolically re impregnate Mother Earth and to appease the other god or gods of the town. Basically, it didn't matter how it came out as long as it came out. For ceremonial sacred community conscious purposes. <laughs> yeah, the Israel's are, Israelites are going, oh no. Yeah, everyone's going to get nice and uptight now. And, you know, Hebrews were like sneaking over and doing paganism also. And, you know. So, Moses laid down the law. And, uh, Moses turned and came down the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands 
tablets inscribed on both sides, inscribed on the front and on the back. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing on them was God's writing engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, there is the sound of battle in the camp. But he replied, no song of victory is this sound, no lament for the de defeat this sound, but answering chorus there is Answer, answering choruses, I hear. Uh-oh. Like in church music? <laughs> and there, as they, as he approached the camp, he saw, parenticles mine, golden calf, and the groups dancing. Moses blazed with anger. He threw down the tablets he was holding, shattering them at the feet of the mountain. He seized the calf they had made and burned it, grinding it into powder, which he scattered on the water and made the Israelites drink. And that's Exodus 32, 15 to 20. See how angry paganism makes these people? And anything that reminds them of it, The, I'm going to read from my journal, my blog here. The first time Moses uh, climbed the mountain to receive the testimony from God, the things uh, God was preoccupied with weren't so anal. They were mostly ceremonial instructions and such. Moses broke the first tablets of the law in a peak at the foot of God's mountain. The second time up, the mountain was very different. The law was revised. The Hebrews had relapsed into pagan ways in Moses' absence. With the cooperation of Am and his brother, the high priest, after that, Moses became an obsessive compulsive control freak about clean and unclean conduct. Sort of like Howard Hughes and his germs, fornication became the new original sin. Yahweh became a jealous god. Nothing connected to fertility cults was to be tolerated. Sex was for procreation only, not for worship, not for ritual, not even for mutual enjoyment. Sex was a shameful thing. <clears throat> you shall have no other gods to rival me. You shall not make yourselves a graven image or any likeness of anything in heaven, above or earth beneath, in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, Yahweh, your God, have a jealous God. That's Exodus 20, 3, 5. Just for emphasis. Yahweh's chosen people were frequent backsliders, as uh, we shall see. Second, uh, First Kings 14, 23, 24. They had built themselves high places and had set up pillars and sacred poles on every high hill and under every spreading tree. There were even male sacred prostitutes in the country. He, my parenthetical's king, Rehoboam, Boam, in parenthetical's, whatever the hell, uh, copied, all the sh copied all the shameful practices of the north, of the nations whom Yahweh had dispossessed for the Israelites, the nerve of them. Now, sacred poles, I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? Phallic symbols, uh, fertility symbols, and quite ubiquitous. 
Uh, Asa did uh, did what Yahweh regards as right as his ancestor David had done. All right, which version? <laughs> uh, he drove the male prostitutes out of the country and got rid of all the idols which his ancestors had made, and that's First Kings, fifteen, eleven, and twelve kind of a pattern here. Paganism, male homosexuality, and sexuality anyway, drinking, things like that. Second Kings 23.4, and I recommend you read the whole thing. Uh, he pulled down the house of the sacred male prostitutes, which was in the temple of Yahweh, and uh, where the and where the women wove veils for Asherah, which is the consort of Yahweh, by the way, according to some archaeological finds. Veils for Asherah. That's interesting. Moses wore a veil. Tamar wore a veil when she tricked her father-in-law Jacob into knocking her up because he had a third son and he wasn't going to give her to. <laughs> Give them to her for marriage. Uh, yeah, and it's funny because Judah was on the way to shear his sheep and she put a veil on, ran ahead and sat in the gateway of a, the entranceway of a pagan temple. And that's why he thought she was a prostitute. Knocked himself off a piece, left some tokens behind. Second Maccabees, which is another reason why I like this book. Six, four. Second Maccabees. The temple was filled with reveling and debauchery by the Gentiles who took their pleasure with prostitutes and had intercourse with women in the sacred precincts, introducing other indecencies besides. I wonder what they're talking about. Other indecencies. Hmm. How many other possibilities are there? Of course, maybe, you know, maybe I just don't know. <laughs> okay, a long one. And I'll break this off and do the rest in another video. More more bits and pieces of evidence. Please stay tuned. Coming right up.